Today I will show you how to create a paper cut design in a squirrel shape and in the end we will apply wooden texture on it to get a more realistic look. In the tutorial I will be using textures and stamps which you can download along with the color palette via the link under the video. If you'd like to see even more tutorials in different styles and get exclusive brush sets, you may want to check out my Patreon, you'll find a link to it below too. Without any further delay, let's begin drawing! I've gone ahead and created a square canvas that is 2000 by 2000 pixels, 300 dpi and color profile is display p3 from RGB. In the beginning, I will go and change the background color. Let's select the color that comes first in the palette. After that I will go to the disk and select black color. In order not to make the video too long, I will be using stamps, but I will try to cover most nuances that might be helpful while creating paper cut designs. So now I'm going to the brush set and here you can see a few stamps of different animals. They are rather simple and this is what is better in paper cut. I will select squirrel, but you can totally pick any other animal or even create your own. Just keep in mind that the content inside the animal shape should match with the topic. Like here I will be using acorns, oak tree branch and if you select bunny for instance, you can use carrots, grass or something else. In the cat it can be fish or birds, etc. So for my squirrel I will select brush size 32% and simply tap in the middle of the canvas. We can move it this way so there is approximately same distance on all sides. This is fine. Now to create paper cut effect we need to add more layers. First I will create a layer on top of this stamp and I will select the color from the palette that comes third. It's this orange. We need to fill the area around the squirrel. For that I will set the layer with the black shape is the reference. Go to the newly created layer and fill this space. Adjust in the color drop threshold. Now let's create another layer to create another shape. If you try to scale the squirrel in uniform mode or even in free form, you still won't get the same thickness of the border all over the shape. Procreate doesn't do that. It could work only on simple and basic shapes as circles, ovals, squares or maybe some curvy shapes that could be fixed using Liquify. But since Procreate is a very smart program, we can totally achieve this and I will show you how. So this black layer is still selected as the reference. We are going to the layer number 3 that we just created and here I will change the color into this yellow. Now I will be doing everything slowly so you can follow along. First I'm going to this selection icon. Here in the menu I will pick automatic and tap on the background to select it. 
it will be highlighted with this bright blue color. Now let's click on Feather and set its amount to 10%. And we should remember this number, because we will use it again. Now I will fill the background, dragging the color, and without lifting the pencil up from the canvas, I will slide to the left to adjust color drop threshold. It must be set to 4.3%. After we deselect and toggle the visibility of this black stamp, we can see that we got two layers and there is this space between them that is equal everywhere. We just need to fix this gap. For that I will stay on this layer with yellow color. Select the brush from Inkin. It can be technical pen or studio pen. And I will try to draw this way. Keeping same distance here. Alright, I think this is fine. Now let me do this. I will create one more layer above this yellow. And this time I will select the yellow layer as the reference. We will create another shape that is bigger. So now I'm going to the layer number 4 and changing the color into this one that we used for the background, which is the lightest in the palette. Let's go to selection again. It is still in automatic. I am tapping on the background to select it. It is also highlighted with this blue. Then I will click on Feather and set its amount to 10% as it was before. Now let's fill this space by dragging the color and the color drop threshold is already set to 4.3%. So we will keep it. After we deselect, we got this shape and the distance between these shapes is also the same. Now I want to create the last shape that will be smaller than this one and it will be located inside. So now I will create a new layer above this black stamp. I'll bring it back now. Set it as the reference again. Go into the layer number 5. And here I will select this dark color for now, but it can be any color. Go into selection. But this time, in automatic mode, I will tap on the squirrel. But in the feather, I will set it to 10% again. Very carefully. And I will fill this squirrel shape by dragging the color inside it. This way, it is 4.3% again. I will lift my pencil and deselect. If we keep this one layer, we will see that we still need to fill the area outside it. And we can easily do it. I will just create another layer above it. Actually, we can already delete the black layer. I will set this squirrel as a reference, 
go into the layer number 6 and I will pick this dark orange color. Then drag it on the background to fill it. We can totally remove the squirrel shape and we got the base for further work. Before we start adding shading on the layers, we can add more details and I will be also using stamps for that. And I suggest we begin with this layer we are on. So with the same color, I will create a new layer above it. And in the stamps, I will select leaves. The brush size is set to 12%. Let me tap somewhere inside the squirrel. Then I will go to the transformation. And we can try to match it with the shape inside. There is this arc that we can continue. I will just rotate the leaves and place the stamp here. So there is this smooth transition from the arc to the leaves. I think this looks fine. Now we can either duplicate this layer or create another one and tap again. This time I will flip this one horizontal, make it slightly bigger and try to fill this space in the squirrel, also finding the shape to match. We can try it here. I will rotate this way. We can totally make it even bigger because we have enough space here. And I'll place it this way. So this arm smoothly goes into the leaf. After that we can merge these three layers. And let's work on the orange now. So I'm going here, creating a layer above it, picking this orange color that the layer has, and in the stamps I will pick acorns. The size here is set to 11%. First I will tap. And after that we can drag it and rotate. I will place it this way. Just filling this space and making it follow the shape. Removing the gap between the layer and the stamp. I think this is fine now. Now I will duplicate this layer, go to transformation, rotate this one and place it somewhere here. We can make it slightly bigger because the space allows. All right. We can totally merge these three layers as well. And go to the layer with yellow color. So I'm creating another layer above it. Picking the color that comes second. And in the brush set I will select the last stamp, that is oak tree branch. The brush size is set to 32%. And we need to tap. 
let's also find the best place for it so it matches with the shape somehow i can see this stem that can go up like this maybe i will make it a bit down and here these two leaves are touching the layer which is perfect let's deselect and to make this shape more attractive i will use seamless lace pattern on it so first i will create a layer on top of this branch stem i will select black color and in the brush set i will pick wavy seamless lace pattern brush if you don't have the entire set of 18 lace patterns you can find it on my gum road and download it for free so now i will set the brush size to 47 percent and draw on this branch to cover it all without lifting the pencil it's okay if the pattern goes outside the shape we just need to cover it all all right now i will do this i want to cut this lace out of the branch so i will go to the layer with the lace and get it selected after that i will go back to the layer with the branch open this menu on the left and click clear after we delete the lace we will see that the shape got cut off the branch if you wish you can play around and apply more patterns on other elements i just wanted to show you how it works now we can merge these two layers and we can also do something creative on top layer so i will first create a layer above it and pick the last color from this row in the palette i will be using the leaf stamp again maybe increase the size a bit let it be 13 percent and i will tap on the canvas this way then i will rotate it drag it in this corner and maybe i will make it a little bigger this way all right this extra shape can be erased let me create another layer and i will select oak tree branch i will make the size smaller here like 22 percent and tap on this side i will also rotate it and drag it down we can see that it fits this space I will just move it a bit to the left so it's not so annoying this is fine i think all right now let's add lace patterns on these two elements for that i will first merge them create a layer on top select black again and i will pick the mosaic pattern 
you can use some other if you want. Now without lifting my pencil and with the brush size set to 42%, I will draw on top of these shapes to cover them completely. Here and also here. Now let's cut this lace out of the shapes. So I'm opening this menu, getting this layer selected. After that I'm going back to the layer with the elements and here in the menu I will click clear. Then delete the pattern. This is the result we got. But this is not finished yet. Now I will get this resulting layer selected. Finally go to the layer with the paper and click clear in this menu. After we delete this layer that helped us we will get this result. And this is exactly what we wanted to achieve. After all shapes are created, we can start adding shadows. First, let's duplicate each layer. So I'm sliding to the left and clicking duplicate. As the shadow color, I will be using this one from the palette, that comes the last. What we need to do is go to every second layer, set it to multiply and repaint it into this dark color. How can we do that? Well, I'm on this layer at the bottom, so I'm changing its mode to multiply. Locking the layer, filling it, then unlocking. Let's do the same for the next layers. Changing the blending mode to multiply, locking, filling, and unlocking. We need to unlock the layers so we could apply Gaussian blur on them, otherwise it wouldn't work. Now let's do the same for the layer with the yellow shape. I will first set it to multiply, then lock, fill and unlock. Finally we need to do it with the top layer, but with the duplicate, not the very top layer. So I will set it to multiply as well, alpha lock, fill it, and then unlock. Now we need to blur these layers with the shadow one by one. I'm on the layer at the bottom now, go into adjustments. Here I will select Gaussian Blur layer and slide my pencil to the right to 11%. The amount of Gaussian Blur totally depends on the size of your shape, so it can be bigger or smaller. For this particular design, I picked this amount and we will keep it the same for all layers. Go into the layer number 2 that has multiply mode. I will also apply Gaussian Blur on it at 11%. Now go into this layer, that is layer number 3, goes in blur and slide into the right until I get 11%. And the last one. Also apply it on the layer and at the same amount. All right. Now for better effect, 
I will do this. I will select all the layers with the shadow. Go to transformation, which is this arrow. And I will drag it diagonally in this direction. This way. So the shadow will be mostly on one side of the drawing. Since we got this gap, we can easily fix it. I will toggle this layer, go to the layer with its shadow and drag the color in this gap. Adjusting the threshold so it doesn't feel more than it should. Now it's better. The shadows are done. But I want to add thickness to our papers. And we can do it this way. We need to duplicate the colored layers once again. Each of them. And after that, I will change the color of the layers between the shadow and the colored layer into white. And we can do it in two ways. We can either alpha lock the layer, fill it with white, and then unlock. Or we can just step on the layer, go to hue saturation brightness, select layer, and increase the brightness to 100%. I will do it for all layers. Here I will select this one that is under the colored layer, hue saturation brightness and setting it to max. Here it will be this layer. Also to 100% and the last one which is layer number 6. Brightness increase to max. Now let's select all the layers that are white. Then click on the arrow. And this time I will move the layers in the opposite direction. Just a tiny bit. So these white layers get slightly visible. The more you move them, the thicker your paper will look. You can also tap to make the movement more accurate. I think this is fine now. This is the effect we managed to achieve. These are our shadows and papers. After all these manipulations, we need to add a texture on our illustration. It can be paper texture or some other. I will create a layer on top of all layers. Select this gray color from the palette. And in the brushes, I will select seamless wood. I will rotate the canvas to 90 degrees clockwise. The brush size is set to 100% and without lifting my pencil from the canvas, I will apply the texture. So after we rotate the canvas back, it will be vertical. To make it look natural, we can change the layers blending mode to overlay. If you want to get the texture more or less intense, you can go to adjustments, pick hue saturation brightness, and here you can adjust the brightness, so you will make it darker or lighter. I will just keep it as it was. Or maybe slightly darker, like 49%. So 
so I changed it only to 1%. I want this texture to be applied only on the papers, but not on their shadows, because it doesn't look cool. So I will go here and clip this layer to the paper. After that, I will duplicate the texture three times and place it above each colored paper. Then clip. I'll duplicate this one. Also drag it above the orange shape. Clip. Duplicate one last time and place this one on top of the orange shape and also clip it. After we did all this, we got the wooden cut design. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Also, if you share your drawing on Instagram, tag me in your post so I'll be able to see it. You can support me and access more content on my Patreon page. You'll find all links in the description to this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.